Hey everybody, welcome back to another creative tutorial. Today we're gonna to go over the perspective and perspective ellipse tool for the assistant tool option. They're a little similar in what they do. So first for the perspective, we're just gonna put four points down and we get a grid. And these little X's are the vanishing points, so we're just gonna keep it simple. I'm going to kind of just line this up on my canvas, not worry about making anything super straight right now. That's great, we have a perspective grid, nothing too complex, right? Well, if you go to click in the middle, you get something a little different. It shows another grid that pops off. So this is pretty neat because it kind of references the original grid that you made here. Without you having to extend or expand or whatever. So if you wanted to Oh, this is like some crazy grid right now. We'll undo that one. But this is, we can say like this is the floor here, right? And then this is um, the front of it. Maybe it's like a stage. I don't know. What, you can do whatever you want with it. Maybe Or maybe it's a walkway and it's a bridge. So you need like the edge of the bridge here to be viewed. And this is like a wall that you need to reference before you cross so you don't like fall off or something. So you can... We'll just put it there. We'll just say it's like the fence or the railing. So some interesting things about these grids. Because I made this one first, the vanishing point will be registering for that first one. If I want to make a straight vertical line, I need to make sure my mouse is hovering over the one that will allow me to make vertical lines and I can make it through the other grids. But if I start here, and that first grid I made, I'm actually gonna use a different color so you can see that. I'll make it bigger too. I can't make a vertical line here. This is only going to affect the, that vanishing point. Whereas if I start over here, go back to blue, and this grid that I made, it will make vertical lines. It will still make horizontal, but it will not do any perspective. I have to go down to the first grid that I made. And same thing with this one here. I have to make sure I am actively hovering over that one in order to get the perspective and everything else out of it. Now something I did notice is if you're outside the grid, you can draw like normal. This is actually really nice because you can make some notes. Like maybe you can say um, change railing design. So if we make the railing here, we want to change the design, we can say, oh, we're going to change that later without having to uncheck the snap to assistance. And then later on, we can go and change it however we want. Like maybe we want the bars to be um, thinner, or maybe we just want a solid wall, whatever it is. And that's really it for the perspective. It's very simple to use. I do like it. It's quick and easy. You don't have to go too complicated with it. You're just limited to the actual grid and what you can do. You're not going to be able to do vertical unless the grid itself is vertical. All right, so we're going to kind of turn that layer off and I'm going to delete all of these so we can go on to the next one. All right, we're going to perspective ellipse. So this is again four points, but instead of a grid, we're getting a ellipse with some lines in the middle. So if we go back to our brush tool, and this one you can see we cannot draw outside it, but we can do the ellipse in the middle here. I'm actually gonna move this a little bit so we can see it better. So as you can see this point is going right up to this vanishing point. So it's kind of giving you an idea of where this is going. And this is helpful, it's kind of like the, um, what is it called? The concentric ellipse, I believe it was. Or no, the fisheye point. It's kind of like the fisheye point. So we can just basically make this sphere here. But instead of having anything in the middle to work with, we're able to be like, okay, so this, I'm going to turn the visibility off. This is where we might have an edge of a room. We're going to take the snap to assistance off. We can make these walls. I'm making a cylinder by accident here, sorry. 
all right we can have these walls and then we can kind of make our room and this is the vanishing point you want to make sure we have that in mind so we can do our door here all right you can see how you can get something out of it and obviously we can use some other perspective tools with this to get a more precise angle if you wanted. So yeah, that's really it for the perspective ellipse. It's not anything crazy, very simple, very similar to the fisheye, but you get an extra reference here to see what's going on. So if I actually wanted to, I could say this is the corner of the room. This is the corner of the room. Make the lines here. And then this could be like um, an ice rink or something. I don't know. Maybe a garden. Fun stuff like that. There's a lot you could do with it. So yeah, that's really the, <laughs> the perspective ellipse. There's not too much going on. Like I said, it's very simple. So yeah. If you have any questions or you want me to go over anything else that I haven't gone over yet, just let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.